Okay, guys. Uh, so we are going to uh, talk about some textbook questions. I ask you through Google Classroom what are the most difficult questions you find. Um, so I got some feedback. Thank you for those of you who commented. So these, uh, this video is basically for you guys who actually did the homework. And trust me, on the quiz you will benefit from doing the homework. So there will be uh, textbook questions on the quiz too. Okay, so yeah let's uh, get started so uh some people asked question 16 so let's do it uh, i'll just briefly go through each one of them okay so the first one like we said before we have to uh divide a constant uh divide the variable so divide a constant uh, not the constant sorry coefficient so here's the coefficient and the coefficient for this term here is one so it's tw uh, 12.4 divided by one so if there's nothing here you just keep the constant Okay, so it's still 12.4. And x squared divided by x is basically this is equal to x times x, 2x times to get it. And divided by 1x, so 1 got cancelled. You have 1x left, okay? So, and if you actually apply the power rule, this is x to the power of 2 uh, divided by x to the power of 1. So it's 2 minus 1, so which is x to the power of 1. And we don't write the 1. All right, so next one here, same idea. We uh, divide the coefficient, so 0 .3, uh, 0 0.6 over 0 0.2 will give you 0 0.3, okay? And then you divide up the variable too. So these two are the same. If you see top and bottom variables are the same, same letter, same exponent, so these are just canceled out, okay? So the final answer is 0 0.3. All right, so this one here, uh, divide up the coefficient. Coefficient for this one is 1. So 1 over 4 will be your new coefficient, uh, the answer, of the coefficient of the answer. k divided by k, you can cancel them up. Okay, so the final answer is 1 over 4 or 0 0.25. Okay. Uh, so this one here. So coefficient, you divide a coefficient first, and this you can simplify them basically into 15 over 4 because these are two negative signs, make it positive. So that's the coefficient, and r divided by r, basically it's nothing, so the answer is 15 over 4. Uh, so here, uh, negative 18 pn divided by 3. So coefficient first, uh, that will give you negative 6, okay? And the number or uh, the uh, variable is pn over n. Okay, pn divided by n. So n and n it cancels up because if you see something same uh, letter and same exponent, they basically cancel out each other. So p, that's the only one left, negative 6p. That's your answer. And this one here uh, is dividing 2 over 3 divided by 2 first. We're dealing with coefficient first. And then that. Okay, it's a dividing sign. So uh, here, you don't add it up though, okay? You time it up. I'm just saying, I, I just separate up the coefficient and the uh, variable. So, the number here, you are dividing fraction here, so times 2 over 1. Sorry, 1 over 2. Okay, reciprocal. So, cancel, cancel. I taught you how to reduce this in the beginning of our semester. So, 1 over 3 will be your coefficient. And what's your variable? 2 of the x's, x2 divided by x. So, you have 1x left. Okay, so 1x left, so just write the x here, that's your answer, you're done. All right, so that's uh, question 16. Question 17 here, expression for the area of each figure. So area of rectangle is basically base times height. So it's base times height or length times width, okay? There are only two uh, dimensions or uh, measurements here, so just, just time them up. And then you time up the coefficient, with which is 33. Time up the variable, which is x times x, which is x squared. Okay. And the second one, base times height divided by 2 will be your triangle area. So 4p, 4p times 10p, base times height divided by 2. Okay. So the top, 4 times 10 will give you 4t because you time up the coefficient first, and then you time up the uh, variable, okay? So coefficient is 40, variable is p to the power of 2, uh, because you have two p's time together, together, divided by 2, which gives you 20p squared, okay? Okay, uh, c is a square, so there's only one measurement there, so every single side is the same. Uh, Area of a square, it's basically side squared. You basically time this side and this side, this side, okay? So, yeah, just 1 over 2, W, 
to the power of 2. Or you can write it as times this. Okay? Just two sides times up. So whenever you see a, a rectangle or a square that actually has four sides, any shape that has four sides, a regular shape that has four sides, you basically time up the two dimensions, okay? Either they are the same, like a square, or they are different, like a rectangle. Time up the two, you're done. So this one basically, uh, you bring it inside, so it's 1 over 4. The 2 applies to this, applies to this, okay? So 1 over 4, w squared. Or in this case, you just times 1 over 2 and 1 over 2, which will give you 1 over 4. And then you time up w and w, will give you w squared, okay? Either way, you will give this, you will get the same answer. Okay, that's 17. Okay, this one here. Claire wants to build a uh, patio outside her cafe. Okay, that's a garbage sentence. You don't have to read that even. The rectangular space outside of Claire's cafe is three times as long as it's wide. Okay, so we, right here, oopsie, right here, we know, first of all, first a piece of information is that it's a rectangle. And the second piece of information is, is giving us a relationship between the width and the length, okay? Uh, the space outside of cafe is three times as long as it's wide. So basically, you set the width. If you set the width as uh, x, your length will therefore be 3x because it's three times the width, okay? So that's what you get out of this sentence. All right, so the area of the space is 48 meters. Uh, okay, let's just write it down. Okay, area equals to 48 meters. When you see a word problem, it's really a good habit to actually write down every piece of information to translate it to something you know how to see, okay? So uh, Claire would like to build a patio with dimension that by that in this space. Uh, will it fit? Explain. So basically... Um, you need to find out the width and the length of this patio so you can see if it fits or not okay um so let's find out what x is basically so if you know the width and length what's the relationship between width length and area so width times length equals to area that's what you always know okay so basically this is x is 3x all right so 3x times x this is your width this is your length, okay? Will equal to 48, which is the the area, okay? So 3x times x, you time the coefficient up together first. This coefficient is 1, so you just have 3 as the number. And x times x will give you x squared equals to 48. So x squared equals to 48 over 3, because divided by 3, divided by 3, okay? Uh... If you remember what I said in class, if you want to throw this little baggage over, isolate x. Uh, three. This is time 3 here, so on the other side, it has to be divided by 3. So either way, it's, uh, as long as you get the same answer. Okay, so 48 over 3 will give you 16. And x squared to 16. So what is x then, guys? x should be 4 because you know 4 times 4 equals to 16. Okay, 4 squared equals to 16. So that's your answer for width. And length, sorry, width is 4. Length would be 4 times 3 because it's 3x, okay? So which is equal to 12. So it's a rectangle that's 4 by 12. Yeah, it will fit, okay? It's actually 4 and 12, they are smaller than 3.5 and 12.5. So Wait, sorry, it won't. <laughs> sorry, this is um, 3.5. It's smaller than 4, so it won't fit. Sorry. Okay, but as long as you actually get out uh, a 4 as the width and 12 as the length, you're good to go. Okay, this is the hardest part of the problem is to set up the equation. So yeah, I'm going to highlight this to set up the equation here. All right, so uh, next question. Uh, okay, so whatever they're doing, the visitor will be traveling okay. Okay, so he, this part is garbage. Okay, the length is four times its width. Okay, again, it sets us a relationship. So length is four times the width. The width would be x and the length would be 4x. Okay, that's the information I got from this sentence. Uh, the sled has a rectangular base area of that. Okay, again, it's the same exact question. The area equals to that. So the equipment to be loaded on the shed measures the equipment 
that can that should be loaded on the shed is that uh, measurement. Will the equipment fit the shed as it's properly packed? Explain your answer. So basically, we're comparing dimensions again. Okay, so we, we have to find out x for sure. So uh, what's the relationship between width, length, and area? So width times length will give you area for a rectangular shed. Okay, uh, sled. Sorry, <laughs> was it's it's right now ten o'clock. Uh, PM. So I'm kind of tired. I've been working all day. Sorry, guys. Um, so uh, width times length, uh, basically x times 4x will give you 3.2. So if you time these two together, is x uh, 4x squared equals to 3.2. x squared uh, will equal to 4 divided by 4 this side divided by 4 that side. Uh, so 3.2 over 4. Okay. So x squared will give you 0 0.8 okay all right so x equals to square root 0 0.8 i don't think that's a perfect square so you need to your calculator to actually uh, to actually do it um so yeah i'm not gonna calculate it by calculator but this is the process as long as you get this step correct you're good to go Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm not going to do the calculator part. I'll just leave it to you. Okay, so model. So uh, some people are really confused about the model method. Um, I know uh, it's, it's not necessary, but you have to know that. Okay, you have to know that. So first of all, uh, first scenario is multiply. The second scenario is divide. Whenever you see um, there is uh, something on top, and side but the middle is missing you're asked to to multiply whenever whenever you are given something in the middle you um the question mark is on the top or on the side you're dividing okay so the multiply part you basically extend it and extend it and you can see that is a rectangle and then you ask yourself this is a positive oopsie this is positive, this is negative. Combine them, uh, positive times negative will give you negative. So that's a white rectangle. Same idea here because we have a positive and a negative here. We have a negative and same idea here. It's the same uh, kind of shape combo, okay? So a small uh, black square times a white rectangle will always give you a, rect a white rectangle. Okay, and if you actually represent by algebra or by number or variables, this is actually negative 2x, right? You have two white rectangles. And then here you have small square, two of them, so it's two. So in the end, one, two, three, four, you have four negative x's, so negative 4x, okay? Which makes sense. So this is multiply here. Divide, it's just going backwards. It's just basically asking yourself what combined with the left will give you something in the middle. So for example here, this is a square, and uh, this is a square here, which is a negative, and then divided by the rectangle, which is positive, okay? So what's missing here? So the whole, the thing here should be a positive or negative. If you actually combine the question mark with the positive to get a negative. So I wish you can recognize that it should be a negative number because a negative times a positive will give you a, po a negative result. Okay? So you know it's a negative, so you know it's color white. And you know it's white. So what will actually give you that? What will combine with the black uh, or the filled rectangle to give you a white square? The answer is a rectangle, and we said it's a white one, okay? And if you actually uh, explain it or talk to yourself using algebra, this is basically x squared. So x squared, this is x. So x squared divided by x will give you an x. Why is it negative? Because this is a negative x squared. Because it's white, negative x squared is di uh, divided by x, positive x here, will give you a negative x, okay? So it's like this. Okay. So you get a negative x there. It's the same scenario for all of them because you're you're dividing this guy here. You're dividing this negative x squared here by positive x. So what you have is here still like negative x. Okay, And then here, same thing, uh, negative x squared divided by positive x will give you a negative x. And the lower one is the same thing. So basically... Uh, if you go backwards, you can check your work saying, okay, positive x times negative x will give you that. Uh, positive x 
and um, negative x will give you a negative x squared still okay so that's for going uh, forward again to check your work this is for dividing basically going backwards think to yourself what will combine with the left side to give you uh, the middle okay all right let's do two more practice and then we're done uh so um here uh yeah do the questions here pause okay do it yourself and then we'll compare answers okay let's talk about the answers so uh first question here what is a multiply because the center is missing okay so the this is a positive x this is a uh, negative x so altogether you will have a big square which is x squared okay so you should get a negative x squared here it's the same thing here because you have a negative x times the positive x here you will get a negative x squared same thing here it's exactly the same combo okay so negative 4x squared so uh, this is divide here you basically ask yourself what will combine with the white rectangle to give you a black rectangle okay uh, so if you actually extend the shape just purely solving it by shape uh, this is copying the length and the width you're basically seeing a small square here okay but ask yourself this is you know this x right you know that you know that's negative x so x divided by negative x will give you what a negative one yes or no right so one of them is negative one okay ask yourself again this is x again what is x divided by negative x here it's another negative one okay what is x divided by negative x again it's another negative one so here the answer is negative three so check yourself uh, check your answer using algebra using uh, actual uh, variables so the center all together what do we have we have six x okay and the side here we have negative 2x so it's basically 6x over negative 2x uh you x and x they cancel up each other so only numbers are left 6 over negative 2 will give you negative 3 did we get the correct answer yes exactly okay so that's your uh work so and question 21 question 21 and 22 on textbook uh i will the next week the, not the next video sorry um i will attach miss terbain's video to you miss terbain make the video to explain question 21 and 22 is right after this okay yeah i'll just jump to her video right now all right question 21 and 22 are the next two and they're a little bit harder because um, it's it's more thinking outside of the box and being able to simplify and uh, use your knowledge of polynomials and, and uh, powers to answer the question. So we'll do question 21 first. So it says the diagram shows that x is the radius of the large circle and the diameter of the small circle. So if we look here, we have a circle within a circle and x, the distance of x, is the radius of the big circle Okay, and the whole diameter of the small circle. Then the question says, write the ratio. Okay, just pause for a second. We know that ratios can be written like this, 1 to 2, or they can be written in fraction form, 1 over 2. We're going to focus on this one right here. So write the ra ratio of the area of the large circle to the area of the small circle. Okay, so we're going to have... Um, large circle area to small circle area. Well, we know that with any circle, the area of a circle is pi r squared. For both of them, whether it's small or big, the formula to find the area is pi r squared. But what r is, is different for each circle, okay? So for the big circle, so I'm going to keep pi, what is the radius of the big circle? Well, if we look here, the radius of the big circle is x, right? So from here to the edge is the radius, and that is x. So let's go replace it in our formula. Instead of r, we're going to have it as x, because that's the value. So pi times x squared. And then for the small circle, we still have pi, but its radius is different. So what is its radius? We can plug it in squared. Well, if we look here... 
and we focus in on the small circle. The small circle is from here to here. And we know that x is the diameter of the small circle. So if the diameter is x, then half of it, which is the radius, would be half of x, 1 half x. Or in other words, x over 2. x divided by 2 is the radius, which is half the diameter. So we're going to plug that in right here. The radius of the small circle is x over 2, or half of x. And now you just solve this. You simplify it. So um, the first thing, we know that x squared is just x squared, so pi x squared over here, divided by pi stays the same. Um, and then we learned in chapter 3 that when we have a fraction raised to an exponent, you can distribute the exponent to the numerator and the denominator of the fraction. So we're going to do that right now. So this becomes pi times x squared over 2 squared is 4. All right. <clears throat> now we just have to simplify it. Okay. So we have pi divided by pi. If you put it in your calculator, you'll see that the answer is going to equal to 1, which basically just means that they cancel each other out. Um, so we have 1 here, or just nothing. And then we have x squared divided by x squared divided by 4. And this is so confusing. What's going on here? Well, let's write it in a, in a way that is a little bit easier to understand. This is the same thing as saying x squared divided by x squared over 4. And that makes a little bit more sense because now we know we have a fraction. And when we have a fraction and we want to solve it, all we have to do is use KCF. So keep the first one the same. Uh, change the division to multiplication. And then flip the second one. So we know that x squared is over 1 because any thing by itself has a denominator of 1 if you want to put it in fraction form and now you just multiply um, the numerators and multiply the denominators so 4 times x squared is 4x squared 1 times x squared is just x squared or 1x squared and now you have something that you've learned monomial divided by monomial and you just have to simplify it so start off with the coefficients 4 divided by 1 is just 4. And then you have x squared divided by x squared. Well, these are just going to cancel out. Or you can look at it in depth if you want. x squared divided by x squared. You subtract their exponents. That goes x to the power of 0, which is just 1. 4 times 1 is just 4. So our final answer or in the ratio between the two areas is 4. Okay, question 22 is kind of the same idea where you're using uh, ratios um, to cancel things out and to simplify them down to one term. So it says we have a circle inscribed in a square as shown. So inscribed means it's inside of it. Um, in terms of the radius r, so use the, the radius to make the ratios. The first ratio they want is the area of the square to the area of the circle. So let's do this up here. So we know that an area of a square, the formula for it is side squared, and the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we have to um, rewrite these in a way where they're using just the same variable, like we did with the uh, question 21. So um, the radius we know is r, because that's from the center to the edge of the circle, it's r. So this one can stay the same. So we want the side length in terms of the radius. So we know that the um, the radius is from the center to the edge. Is it just from this center to this edge? No, it's from all the centers to all the edges. So this is also the radius. And this is also the radius. So the side length of the, of the square if you look here, would be two radiuses combined, would be equal to the side length of the square. Okay, so if I rewrite this, the side length we said is two radiuses 
and that's all squared, divided by pi r squared, which is the area of a, the circle. Now you have to simplify um, this. So 2 times the radius squared, this is like saying 2 times r squared. It's a product of, uh, of two powers. So this 2, this sorry, this exponent of 2 actually applies to both the 2 and the r. So 2r squared or 2 times r squared is actually equal to 4 because 2 squared is 4 and r squared is r squared. So that's equal to um, 4r squared. Now the denominator stays the same, it's just pi r, pi r squared. And now you have to just simplify it using um, monomial division. So first thing you want to do is 4 divided by pi. Um, you can't really do that and get like a, an accurate number. So just keep it as 4 over pi. Okay. And then you want to do the uh, variables. So r squared divided by r squared. Those would just cancel each other out. So your answer for the ratio is just 4 over pi. So that's the for part A. For part B, it says find a ratio of the perimeter of the square to the circumference of the circle. So if we write that here, the perimeter of the, squ the square we know is 4 times the side length. And we know that the side length is 2 times the radius. So it's 4 times 2 times the radius. And the circumference of a circle is pi times diameter. And we know that the diameter is also uh, 2 times the radius. So here we have to now apply monomial multiplication. 4 times 2r would be 8r because 4 times 2 is 8 and r times nothing is r. And then pi times 2r um, would be um, 2 pi r or pi times 2r. Um, you can multiply the 2 and the pi and get like a, a big decimal number, but you don't actually, you don't actually have to do that to, to solve this question. Um, so now you just kind of simplify. 8 divided by 2 is 4. We still have the pi on the bottom. We didn't get rid of it. And then r divided by r, they just cancel each other out. So this ratio is also 4 over pi. So for part A and part B, you actually get the same answer for the ratio.